Commissioner Muller, how are you? Welcome. Yep. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. How are we doing? Pretty good. good. How are you? All right. Yes, a sec. Okay. So we're talking about drones. That's what we'd like to find out about today. Thanks. Okay. Go ahead. Shoot. Any okay. Well, uh, first of all, um, we appreciate your doing this uh, interview. And uh, it's also uh, something uh, that's very positive. Uh, uh, I think we feel in the way that you tried to develop uh, good relations with the, uh, with the community. Thank you. And, Thank you very uh, much. I think that's, um, uh, I don't know if it's, you could say it's unusual, but um, as we look at what's been going on in different cities, I think that um, what you've achieved so far is, is unusual. And so um, I think that's you know, in the spirit where, you know, we're asking these questions because uh, as you know, people do have concerns about surveillance uh, yeah. at uh, political gatherings and protests. And um, uh, what we'd like to do, uh, if you don't mind, is to record this interview. It would help me. I'm, I'm going to be writing an article for a website called truthout.org. Mm -hmm. uh, I also publish a, a very a limited distribution newsletter to about 700 people, people around the country who are concerned about uh, drones and surveillance and, and, and drone warfare, that kind of thing. Okay. So uh, uh, the first question that I that I have is I, I know that from Matthew Gallagher that you have uh, uh, two drones uh, and I was wondering uh, when did uh, Yonkers uh, PD uh, get those drones? Do you do you recall? I I was involved in the procurement process, but I think it's probably in the last couple of years. You okay. know. Yeah, so it, 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 it hasn't been for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but probably in the last couple of years. All right. So Julie, can I, did you have, yeah, have a I question? Would, uh, yeah, because I set up this meeting and I was expecting um, uh, Councillor Dukic to be here. Is he planning to come to or well, no? He, he didn't, he didn't, um, he did not, I guess he didn't get the invite. So I forwarded to him as oh, I did. So hopefully he'll be able to jump in quickly. So. Yeah, I, I spoke to him and he said he would try to be on the phone if he couldn't, uh, be, you know, be on the video. So mm -hmm. he's, he's okay. aware that we're, we're okay. doing this. I just didn't want to leave him out by mistake. Um, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, uh, so I know you weren't involved in the purchase now, but do you have any idea what we, what the Yonkers taxpayers paid for them or if it was Yonkers taxpayer what department yeah, of it was government? probably purchased through like equipment um you know equipment lines which i believe would be our three or four hundred lines um i don't anticipate that it was more than twenty thousand dollars probably less than that um yeah. you know it was and, and again we're still you know we're still developing the policy on it i'll have to with respect to um our agreement with the with the um the Department of Justice, we have to share with them, um, you know, what, what policies we're writing out. So we'll be sending that, um, you know, to them for review because they review all of our new policies. Uh, that's something that just pattern and practice for us for now. Um, so, but we have a policy draft that we just have to send it to them. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, because uh, I do want to ask about the policy, but I wanted to just ask a couple of questions about uh, the drones, the technology of the drones that you have. Um, I believe they're DJI Mavic uh, Enterprise dual drones. And I was wondering, do you know if they have zoom lenses? Uh, do they have thermal sensors? Uh, do they have loudspeakers? Because I know that this particular model does offer those uh, options. Uh, no, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get that information for you because I wasn't okay. really sure what this was about, but like we're all about transparency. I'll all right. That information to you. Um, I can That'd be great. Now and make sure you have that. Okay. Um, do you know what the reasoning was 
uh, behind getting the drones? In other words, there's many different uses, but what, what was the reason? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it was just, you know, like a lot of things that we do, we saw the technology, we liked it. Um, like I said, I wasn't really involved in the planning, but it seemed like a great thing for a lot of different things. So, you know, for one, uh, accident reconstruction, right? So you're getting, you're getting a position from above where you can re reconstruct an, ac uh, uh, um, an accident. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use it, the fire department has them too for fire suppression and investigation. Um, we have it for rescue events. We have it lo for lost or missing persons. Um, heaven forbid, we haven't had one, but if we had a mass casualty event, um, we can use it for hostage situations. We can use it for barricaded suspects. We can use it for act active shooters, um, apprehension of armed and dangerous people fleeing. Um, and so those were some of the main reasons. But then there was other thing too, um, like, and I, I guess this is where Julie was concerned, like special events. We had planned in using it for, um, hold on a second. This is Dushan, uh, the, the attorney. Hey, Dushan. Hey, I, I, I'm on with, um, I'm on about the drone um, meeting with Nick and Julie. Uh, yeah, sure, be on speaker, I don't care. Um, they are, they're recording it, um, which is fine with me. I have no objections to that. Um, but uh, um, let, you want me to see if Nick has, or Julie has the number that you can call into? Okay. All right. I'll text it to your cell phone right now. Okay. Bye. Julie, do you have a, a call in number for uh, Dushan? I don't actually. I was just, oh. that's, I don't, unless it, unless he can use a, a general, um, I, 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 for some reason, and I don't really know why, when I generated the invitation, it didn't, it didn't generate a series of call in numbers. So I don't know whether any random local, Zoom call-in number would work. I could, well, I mean, if you want, like, you can give yeah. him your number and put him on speaker, or maybe Nick can. I mean, that that would. Oh, that'd be fine. Sure. He can. He yeah. can call my number. What's the number? Nine one four. Yep. Eight zero six. Uh huh. Six one seven nine. Okay, he's got it. Um. If he has a cell phone, I don't understand why he can't just link up by cell phone with Zoom. But it's okay, whatever you, whatever you want to do. You'll have to ask him. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. so are we looking at more like you guys have issues with a drone used for like those? Yes, you know, hi. Put out, like even like rescue yes. and recovery. Okay, so uh, I'm on. You're on speakerphone. Okay. I'm a, personally, I'm most concerned with its use for public gatherings that are First Amendment protected, right. not such as demonstrations and religious meetings and political marches. I was really quite shocked to see drones in the sky over politically protected speech when we met at City Hall on what June 3rd, was it? Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and then the, the other concern is about the tracking of political activities and political activists. And this does veer over into, the, into questions about how it's used for criminal behavior. There is very, very elaborate networking, facial recognition, and social networking technology now that can be used to track all of people's social contacts. Mm -hmm. And it's increasingly all of us are getting monitored. Our, our driver, our license numbers can be followed from the sky with all the technology that's being used for collecting, you know, either catching people right. speeding or, or going over bridges. So mm -hmm. I'm really concerned about, and, and this does veer into criminal investigations because I, I think, and the Black Lives Matter movement has been raising questions about using social networking to label people as gang members, which means labeling them as criminals based on their affiliation. Well, well who's labeling them as gang members in the Yonkers okay. PD? Well, like that's what I, we want to know, whether oh. there's tracking of social networks. 
beyond just tracking specific crime. So that's one question. That's one well, maybe, question. Maybe, I could, could I just say yeah. that that's a concern, but could we just jump back to one thing? Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you know uh, how many protests uh, uh, so far that the, the drones uh, have been used at or a drone has been used at? I, we well, I think we, we just started using them. Um, so I, I would imagine that we have only used them for the, the first big one, I guess it was there. And even as there were subsequent ones, I don't think we used it. It wasn't because we didn't want to. It just mm -hmm. depended on the size. You know, like I said, we're still putting this whole program uh, together. But ju just, to, just to start off from this, like, do you guys, are you totally anti-drone? Or is it like, do you, you know, I just want to make sure I have an understanding of where you're coming from. Like, should we not have it for lost or missing persons? Oh, I, or, I would say from, from, and I think Julie would share this view too, but from my standpoint, uh, the concern that we have, uh, you, you listed many uses. Yeah. When I asked what, what, it, what would it be used for. Yep. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, none of those use, all those uses are perfectly understandable and fine. I think the concern that, that I have and that Julie has is that the drones not be in the air when there are political events and protests, uh, and uh, this is, there's a question about using the drones to follow suspects. Um, and my understanding is that you probably have to have a warrant to use a drone to follow a suspect. Follow a suspect uh, in a public place. In other words, if you if you have if you're following uh, John uh, Jones. And you think he is, uh, you know, undertaking criminal activity? If if you say I need to follow John Jones, uh, I think that the uh, ACLU and others may say that you need a warrant uh, specific to him uh, because the drone may take in other people doing other things who may be inadvertently scooped up and okay let's let's start there then nick we we have no intention whatsoever and i'm on i'm being videoed or taped so we have no right. intention of doing that none none so uh, if we're talking about specifically the yonkers police department's policy on drones yeah we have no no interest in doing that we're no no interest in you know again if you if you want to try to parse this out a lot of it has to do with um events that are occurring mm -hmm. right so if it's a suspected explosive device and we can use the drone to get closer without having a first responder like a firefighter, a police officer, or an amb ambulance person go to kind of take a look at it. Sure. sure. Um, so now, Nick, you're telling me you're okay with those uses. Julie, are you okay with those uses or you don't want it for anything? No, I'm, it's not the drones I'm worried about. It's the monitoring of constitutionally protected speech which includes right. constitutionally protected gatherings I, I don't think anybody has any I, I mean i'm not in disagreement about that but you know the other thing is too like it, you know especially with you know what the, the re, and listen i'm certainly open to, to suggestions but like one of my thoughts was like wasn't like with the protests you know we're very blessed as you said earlier that we didn't have any trouble in, in our protests we had no damage to property we had no physical injury and we had no arrests, at least until the very last one, where the guy ran onto the New York State Thruway. And if anybody wants to tell me they shouldn't be arrested for that, then I just respectfully disagree. Um, but everybody else, so it didn't. But like, I think, you know, the idea is there for, you know, again, I'm, I guess we're just coming from different positions, looking at it in terms of transparency, having video footage of a protest, not to identify individual people, to make sure that the public is not, you know, hurting each other or the police, make sure the police are not engaging in misconduct and things like that, to have some kind of a, a reference point to go back and review for training purposes and to make sure that everybody was doing their job on the police side. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. Um, so I think, you know, I mean, do you guys have best practice policies where you can work that in and say, look, you know, obviously if there, if you had an event that you were, so if we're in agreement that like lost, lost people is okay. Right? right, using the lost yeah. people. But um, I think the starting point here is, and again, I'm not a drone expert, but I think like the easiest way to solve this problem is to say, if there's nothing relevant that dealt with training or dealt with 
wrongdoing or dealt with misconduct, you just get rid of the footage. I mean, and, and I think that how about, would... How about saying, looking at it from a different angle? In other words, if, uh, if we look at it from the angle of people who are at the protest, or who right. might be wanting to go to a protest. Right. If Yonkers has a policy that says there will be no drone oversight of uh, protests, uh, then that is a message to people that the Yonkers police will not be using that type of surveillance, which for the average person, I would say, and, and you may feel this way too, um, when you're out, uh, I was, I was, I was uh, out on the, the river with uh, the uh, kayak club down in Yonkers and somebody flew a drone over and they were watching us. Um, I've been in other situ situations uh, in other places where that's happened. For an uh, individual, that experience is intimidating. That is, a, you're, you have stationary cameras on stores and light poles and we know that. But when you have a drone that you can see is moving around, uh, you know you are having an experience of being watched. And so what I think we're saying is the very experience of the drone in the air is an experience of intimidation and possible retribution. So our position would be that the Yonkers uh, should announce that there will be no drone surveillance of protest or political gatherings. That, from the standpoint of how people feel when they're being watched by a drone. Well, we can't say that everyone feels that way, Nick, right? I mean, you don't speak for everybody. No, um, but I'm saying there are, there, are, there are people who do feel that way. And so, even, I mean, the UN just came out with a report that said that governments need to take a positive pro-protest position because protests are a necessary function of democratic activity. Oh, so, you, you don't have, I, I, you have no argument there with me. Um, yeah. I, I've gone on record multiple times and, and especially with the most recent situation with the George Floyd protests. Yeah. We raised the protests and that's yes. why we, we solved a lot of problems. We made sure we had water for our, our, the people that uh, participated. We made sure we had an ambulance. Um, I got to think through this one. I'm willing, I'm, Nick, I'll always go into things with an open mind. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to, you know, commit to anything right now. Well, sure. No, that's one reason I wanted to have this interview because I felt like it would be, uh, from what I know of you, that it would be an exchange where we would be able to present this in a way that you would be, you know, listening. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, there's no question. Cause like, like I said, like one of the, one of the things is, and I, I'd ask you how you could help me with this. And you may just say, look, you know, the ends don't justify the means. But like one of the things is that when you have a situation like this with the George Floyd protest where the police, although we didn't kill anybody, you know, and but it's more about a, a call for police reform and things like that, which we support. Um, and we support people's First right, uh, Amendment right to assemble. That's the, the very, very foundation of how this country was established. Um, and we would never want to inhibit or intimidate or make anybody feel uncomfortable. But having said that, there's also that component that I see as the police executive is if because this is such a hot situation and there is misconduct on the behalf of police officers or there is wrongdoing on the behalf of people assembly that are not doing like you or Julie would do or 99% of the people that are there in attendance. But if someone hits somebody over the head with a bottle and I have another vantage point to be able to get to that location quickly because I'm, I'm viewing it real time and stop it or somehow... Uh, you know, uh, lower the, you know, get that situation under control. I think it's helpful for everybody. But I'm will, like I said, I'm not saying like absolutely not. I'm saying I'm just giving you the police side. Like, you know, the whole thing. Like Tish, Tish James of the Attorney General is doing a big study on on um, how the police conducted themselves in a number of protests in New York City. Um, I think the drone 
if you had drone footage, it would do a better job of kind of identifying if there was in fact wrongdoing, or at least giving us a better roadmap as to more than just the he said, she said. And I think like to Julia's point earlier, I think the issue is not the drone, it's how it's used. But if the stuff is gotten rid of immediately, and, or it's not kept anyway, and we have a policy where we're bound to do that, um, how, how do you feel about that? Well, what the, I, I, I'm still on I'll say how I feel, but Julie may want to say how she feels. Yeah. I, I would say how I feel is that you personally, as a police commissioner, might get rid of the tapes. And, but if you replace it as police commissioner and the drone is permitted at the, at the protest, that person may not have your same attitude. No, no, but see, now that we're getting somewhere because, Nick, to that respect, I think that's where the policy has to be robust. The policy well, that, that sets forth, and that's where the legal people come in, where they say, look, you can't do this. You must destroy it at this point. You know, it may, you, know you cannot, you have to, you can audit, there things like that. I don't even think we keep any footage. Or, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't have any intention of keeping any footage. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, if, well, if, if, and so. But, 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 okay, I, but, but I'm jump, I'm saying, I'm, let's jump back to the perspective of the person protesting. Yeah. Who already is suspicious of government behavior. Sometimes with good reason, sometimes not. But that person, we want to, and we want to create a, a climate and an atmosphere and an environment that encourages those people to be part of a protest. And I'm saying that the very existence of the drone in the air is, is negative to the environment of free speech. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we can jump back to the policy, who destroys the drone. But what we saw with Barack Obama is he had certain rules around, the, around drone killing. And I don't believe what he did was correct. But what we find is when Barack Obama leaves office, those rules are gone. And how much ever lawyers may want to speak about this or that, it, it really doesn't matter. But Julie, I'm sorry, please, please yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, um, I, I, I have a few thoughts about it. One is that generally speaking, surveillance in the United States is, um, requires, surveillance of an individual requires um, a warrant. And so your, you have to define it, Julie, because that's not necessarily true. You know, we don't need a warrant to watch if we have a hotspot where there's a robbery pattern. Um, and we, we see some, we, there's someone who's on our radar because he's been arrested. But you're defining a demonstration as a potential hotspot. So no, no, no. You're, not so, but, so you're using nope. a technology that was introduced to us, at least the first I ever heard of drones. It was drones flying over... Iraq or Afghanistan and dropping bombs on innocent civilians. So you had about all the mistakes that were made by the drone operators. So even just because of that association with drones, which are military equipment, it's intimidating to have a drone flying overhead when you're supposed to be participating in protected speech. Just because there's a possibility that a crime might be committed, I don't think gives you the right to surveil a scene where there's protected speech and protected so you assembly think so going you, on. So you think that it trumps like the safety of people? Like the the, the you the, have the you had many many police officers on hand. Mm -hmm. I assume they were armed. Of course. I and now you've promised us that there will be body cameras. That means the police will be carrying around cameras with oh, on yeah. their bodies. Yeah. So I appreciate that they're carrying body cameras. I hope that policy will force them to be using them when they actually use any violence against Yonkers residents. No, actually, we I, don't, I don't think that's very fair to say use violence against Yonkers residents. All right, you know how many restraint. Oh, no, it's kind. not. Well, no. it's research great, Julie, but let's talk okay. about Yonkers. How many excessive force cases did we have last year? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to tell How you. Many what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. How many ex six. Oh, excessive force cases? Yeah. I'm not talking about excessive force. I'm talking about just he, every he time said, force is used, the camera should be in play. 
well, but that's well, another. It's another issue. What I'm saying is there are. Yeah, I know, but I, I like I like to talk where you know specifically with respect to Yonkers because I don't want to you know you kind of conflate this issue to say, well, we're identical to Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, because we're not. So I let's hear just. You. There have been a lot of changes, and it, you know, look, I'm. This isn't. This isn't the main issue I follow. I got involved with this because I was shocked to see drones in the air, presumably taking photographs of peaceful demonstrators. It did not happen. That's absolutely not true. Oh, there were no, there was no use of any video? No, what there was, was the point no, of you said, no, you said photographs. So I'm going okay. by what you said. We did oh. not take any photographs as anybody. It was a live footage. It was a live footage that was going on where we had someone watching the video to make sure that there wasn't any problems. Now, like I said to Vic, uh, Nick, I'm sorry. I'm not opposed to actually taking a good look at this, but I'm trying to explain Appreciate the reason. It. There is no dastardly, you know, sinister type of approach here that I'm looking to find out who, you know, is angry with the police. Like the reality of policing in a democratic society is that you have to be willing to take hits and you have to be willing to, to be um, subject to very severe criticism. Some of it is unfair at times, especially when you're talking about, because I'm, I'm actually a, um, I'm a state's rights guy. I'm an anti-federalist. So to put all police departments together when we don't have a federal police department, is, is, it's challenging. Having said that, we were not taking pictures of anybody. It was live video. And again, I think that the, the and I'm not saying you're saying this, but I, you know, it was never our intention. It was just our intention to, to add to public safety. Like we would use it for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We might use it for Riverfest. And again, it's not to find out who's there. It's to say that if there's an area where someone keels over and has a heart attack, that we can see that pretty quickly. Or if someone, you know, somebody robs somebody and we can see what's happening. Like, you know, you kind of go where the action is. If, if people feel that this is a bad idea, I'll definitely have a conversation with the mayor about it. But I'm not so sure that the ends justify the means to say, because I don't want to feel uncomfortable, I can also potentially save someone's life because they, you know, we, we can see things happening very quickly from, a, from an elevated position. Because there was a lot of, you know, and Nick, you should know this too. There was a lot of misunderstanding. Like I was at the third precinct for the big protest. The one that Julie was at, I think that was the one. No, that, no, was, that was the small, the one I was at was uh, Shanae. So I, I, I missed the one two days before. I wasn't the there. Two days before one. was gigantic. It was like but, a thousand So if people. you were using the drones for that one, you were also using one for the smaller one the day after that followed, because that was the one I was at where I first I don't know if you were. Drones. I'll check. I'll check. Because again, I think, I think one of the things that, you know, I'm glad you brought it up because I think one of the things is that, it, it, you know, you guys bringing this to my attention and bringing it to the mayor's attention, and Nick, too. Um, it's something we can really take a dive into now and look because we're going to send we have Appreciate to send it. stuff to the Department of Justice anyway. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like as far as the third precinct, you know, a lot of times when people start with, like you said, like taking photographs of individual um, uh, people that are assembling legally yeah. and lawfully. No way. Didn't happen. Um, Can I ask a question about that? Supposing uh, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, or New York State Police asks to see the video of a, of a protest that you have uh, have been uh, filming, uh, and you 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 yourself personally uh, don't intend to review those, you know that video. Um, but what if these other agencies ask you? For that, or or ask you prior to a protest, may we may we share that we share those tapes with us? What 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 would you say to that? I would say you'd better send me um, something on official letterhead, um, laying out the request, and I would forward it to my corporation counsel to make sure that the legality of it is assessed within the bounds of the law, not the law I agree with, or you agree with, what the law is in general. And okay. if, if it didn't correspond with the law, they're not getting it, Nick. Okay, but it, but it, what we're, we're we're witnessing right now with the Department of Justice is is, a, is an interpretations of the law that are, in, in my opinion, uh, quite negative. I mean that we have things that are going on with respect to people's human rights in in this country that are immigrant people, for instance, that are very destructive and harmful that uh, apparently fit within somebody's notion of of legality and so um if we don't fly a drone at a rally we dramatically diminish 
the possibility for uh, people to have themselves subjected to federal surveillance or or state you know surveillance. The state police flew a drone at the protest at West Point on June 13, and uh, this is something that uh, people did notice and, and people didn't care for. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, these are all uh, complications uh, and and realities that extend beyond. Uh, your personal, you know, purview. So, you know, when you do contemplate this, um, you know, I, I, you know, I think we, we would appreciate it if you uh, would take those things in, into account also. Oh, I definitely would. I definitely would. Like I said, I, you know, it, and, and I, when I say my purview, it's our purview. It's everybody's yeah. purview, you know, and it's kind of like that's a difficult thing about being a police commissioner is that you have so many, um, you have a lot of balancing to do. Right. Would, would, this, would this policy that you have uh, be subject to uh, vote by the city council or public hearings before no, it would be implemented? It would go, it, normally it does not. It's, it stays with internal. Our people look at it from the standpoint of what we are, uh, Nick, we're an accredited agency, right? So we're accredited both on the federal level and we're accredited on the state level. Now that means that we meet a level of standards. So we're normally pulling our uh, policies and procedures uh, from best practice standards across the country, Um, but it does not go before the council. It does not. Well, in this particular case, since it is a First Amendment uh, concern, wouldn't it be appropriate to uh, apprise the public of what your intentions were? Well, we can definitely apprise the public. I mean, that's not a problem. And and get their comment before, uh, and wouldn't the council necessarily have to approve how uh, uh, you know this tool of law enforcement is used? Not not at the council. Not as far as I know. You know, and not not that it couldn't happen, but I don't think it. I don't. You know, I don't think that there's any, you know, merit mechanism in place for the council to review uh, police policy. I just think it's just one is the executive branch and the other one is the legislative branch. Um, so I mean, you can make a case what you're saying, but I'm just I'm just being honest with you. I don't know if. I don't think I've ever recalled a policy for anything ever going before the city council. Well, I know I that there are other communities where uh, the city council has uh, given direction about this kind of thing. And so it is considered to be uh, the use of drones and surveillance is considered to be a matter of, of, of wide public interest and in needing uh, community uh, uh, information and approval. But Julie, mm-hmm. go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I wanted to go back a little to what I was starting to say about body cams. Internal department policies and all the city departments are not legislative matters that usually go before the city council. Obviously, there's other ways to inform the public, but the city council doesn't specifically approve internal operating procedures for various departments. A lot of cities have different ways in which they handle it, only because there are variations in city charters and the town, as the town charters all throughout the country. So it just really depends on how it's, it's structured. But if you chose, you could put it before the council. No, it's not something in the internal operating procedures, whether it's for a sanitation department, police, fire department, they don't, um, that, that's not something that's, that goes before the council necessarily for, um, for approval. So. So, but I assume there could be a conversation at the city council if the city council initiated it. No? I mean, anybody can certainly raise yeah. whatever issues they'd like yeah. to, um, but it is, uh, as the commissioner mentioned, it is a separate uh, uh, body yeah. of government. And, okay. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah. What, what, so what, I, what, I wanted what, to go back to the question of body cams. You had assured us at the demonstration that I did attend that, and the mayor subsequently announced that he will be finding the funds to invest in body cams for the police as you had suggested. So I'm wondering about some of the elaborate AI, big data analysis and facial analysis that's available now, for example, if you buy, if you were to buy Axon body cam body cams, my understanding that those could be linked to the drones. They could also be linked to cell phone and internet traffic. So I'm wondering whether 
to what extent the, I'm wondering specifically what body cameras you're thinking of buying. Will there be a possibility of linking all the data that's coming in? And, you know, in the future, there's going to be the possibility of monitoring several drones at once and coordinating I, I the footage. Think... I'm just really concerned about the use of mass data to elaborately analyze social networks. Yeah, so um, I don't have, we are looking to do a pilot program with Axon. They got an 80% share of the body market um, market, a body camera market, and uh, I like the product. Obviously, we have to go through uh, the board of contract and supply to determine, you know, like, the, you know, who gets the bid, um, but they may, but I, I mean, I have no intention of, of you know, attaching drone uh, footage for anything like that. The, the purpose of the body camera is to make sure that, you know, we're transparent. We have as much information as we can provide for the public. Um, the cops are doing the right thing. The public is doing the right thing. And it's, it's all kind of synced up together. And one of the things that we're pushing for in the policy is in the event that it's a non-incident, there's like a, a, a shelf life that the ACLU recommends that we're going to correspond with which is like between 45 and 60 days where that, that footage gets destroyed. So obviously if it's a criminal case or it's a complaint or something like that, it stays longer. But for the, the stuff that just random, they're out there doing their thing, the cops, and it doesn't have any evidentiary value, uh, that'll be destroyed within between 45 and 90 days. I think they said that anything above 90, they weren't, you know, people didn't like. So we're, we're trying to do that now. So I appreciate that, and I'm still concerned about the possibility of Axon's capability of linking on the ground photos with footage taken from drones. And I'm still really concerned about the, you know, drones are military technology. Their history is of being used to, to kill people. Right, but so, this is a this is like a global narrative, Julie. I'm talking. We just got to talk about Yonkers here. All right. So in Yonkers, up. I appreciate that the police interest is having as many eyes as possible in as many places as possible, and that you'd like to be able to see everything going on so that you can prevent violence or stop it instantly. And mm. the popular interest is in having privacy and to be able to act in public without necessarily having every detail of our activities recorded by the police or even or logged in any way by the police or but like i said like we're that that you know, like, there, there's yeah. no way we can parse out you know having a body cam program which it seems like is the popular popular yeah. opinion um without having to inadvertently you know uh, take video so i think that the idea and the fact that the aclu is you know, you know, obviously they, they have a very strong um, stake in all this. Um, and, and I'll tell you what's interesting because I've, I've read extensively about it. You know, I'm trying to learn as much as I can to, so we can come up with a good, as, as good of a policy as we can. But um, one of the things the ACLU recommends is that the police don't turn it off because right. they don't want to yeah. give off discretion. But then um, that also leads into your issue of saying that then lots of people are being captured on this. So it's like- It is an issue. And there, honestly, I don't think the answers are there yet. I know there's discussion on it about the risk that this footage that so far has been very valuably used to expose instances of excessive force by the police. We're, we have just a few I, okay. seconds left. Could, could yeah. we restart? This for just a, a few more minutes. I, I just I, I think it, if it if it ends we will we can restart. Yeah. Would that be I, okay, I just, Commissioner? I, I just uh, hit the upgrade button. So I, I, may... I give you all the time you need. Don't That's worry. Very gracious. Me. Thank you. If it stops, we'll we'll do it. I just hit the upgrade button because I didn't. Want oh, you did. To okay. By the interruption. Yeah. All right. Thank so, you. So we'll see. Um, so, so anyway, I, I, I don't, jump. I, anyway, my concern is that I do not want the Yonkers police buying the program that Axon has to connect body cans to drones. I don't want us to be surveilling people from the sky and the ground at once. I hear you that there, the ACLU has worked out the policies for body cams. I would like demonstrations not to be filmed by drones. I experience drones as intimidating 
and I believe it is First Amendment policy not to be intimidating people. I think the president broke the law when he ordered the military to, to fly helicopters over peace. Back. Sorry Thank about you that. so Sorry. much. Thank Sorry you. for the interruption. Yeah. Thank you. So um, anyway, I, I just would urge you not to get the system from Exxon that can link everything up into one giant um, one giant surveillance. Uh, yeah, we don't, I, I would say that, but I'll let you know. But I, I think you. I have absolutely no intention, nor does the mayor to do that. We're not looking to create a big brother atmosphere here. We want yeah. transparency. We want the public to be, feel comfortable with body cameras. We want to use them if we need to for training, for discipline, to enhance criminal cases. Uh, um, and that's it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Would, would you um, make available to the public the uh, draft of the policy that you submit to the Justice Department? Probably, uh, probably not the draft, but probably what when we get it back from the Justice Department, we may. But okay. Probably not before. When, when so would you... That yeah, I'm sorry. It really concerns me. As far as I can tell, this current Justice Department has no interest in protecting civil liberties or the right to organize. Well, I, I don't, I don't know. Department that ordered. So I, I would really ask that the ACLU, that you get involved with consulting with the ACLU and the community before you go submitting something to the Justice Department. I, I'm not, I don't, I, I can't get involved in these political conversations. You're All like, right. Okay, know, fair enough. Never going to happen. Um, but I will tell you this. And but I'll why say not? this too. I will read and I will read and I will read. Okay. And if you have my email. If you want to send me things to read, I'll read them. Um, and I'll, I'll read everything and we'll do some real critical thinking about this. We'll think about it objectively. Um, and we'll move deliberate, we'll move slowly and, and we'll make sure that we have it right. Um, yeah. like I said, I think it is a good tool. I'm not looking to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, I think that, you know, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation for the police at this time, because if a cop did something wrong where there could have been drone footage that could have captured it. Um, I don't think people are as worried if someone hit a cop over the head with a bottle some people, but if, if a cop hits somebody, I think that, you know, people would want that information say, well, why didn't you have a drone in the air? I could absolutely see that conversation happening and you could too. So, I mean, you, you say like, you know, if, when you have a tense situation like that, do we want to have some kind of thing to make sure that everybody did what we're supposed to do and not, um, you know, acted properly and all that? Like, you know, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a concern of mine. I know it's not high on your list and we're probably, at variance about this, but, you know, just so you know where I'm coming from, like, I want to, you know, especially if, you know, you know, there's allegations against police officers, like, it is good to definitively know if what was alleged to have happened did in fact happen. And a drone view is probably very helpful with that. Now, does that trump, uh, you know, civil liberties? To you, certainly not. To Nick, certainly not. Other people, it may, right? And that's, that's the balancing act that I have because I have a lot of different constituencies here that have yeah. different positions, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think you're aware that our concern is the gradual construction of a surveillance state in the name of all of the good things that people would like to accomplish. Right. But Yonkers is not, so, I, again, I, I have no interest in that whatsoever. Yeah. I just want to run the department. I want my people to be very happy with my officers. I want my officers to come to work and be happy. Yeah. I want to keep crime down. At yeah. the same time, I want to have our residents feel secure with how, how we police. You know, um, I think one of the reasons why we didn't have any problems with our protests, even though they were very large and very lengthy, the big one was like eight hours. And in eight hours, things can really go sideways. Uh, and fortunately for us, I think luck was with us. I think the, the officers performed admirably. I think the protesters were wonderfully cooperative. Um, and I think that's something that I'm just so proud of my officers and, and my protesters for. I think we've made a lot of deposits in our community bank account yeah. that, yeah. I mean, you've seen our Harka interaction. I see, I see it almost every yeah. meeting. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so I think we were, if you want to call this a marathon, so reimagining policing, understanding what reform means and how we go about it, the frustrating thing for me, I'll just say to both of you, and I know I'm being videotaped or taped, is, you know, I think there's such a rush right now to do something. And we don't want to just do something for the sake of being quick. 
and for the sake of, of, of uh, you know, kind of capitulating to the clamor. We want to be smart. That's what professionals do. So I can share with you guys that um, we're embarking on a partnership with the Justice Collaboratory from Yale Law School, where whatever training we end up uh, electing to do, whether it's implicit bias or procedural justice or de de-escalation training, it's going to be one of those three. Um, I want to measure it so we can manage it. I want to make sure that what we did actually is effective. And if, we, if, if Yale does, and I know they will, do a great job of assessing us before and after, this might be something we can share nationally with the rest of the police departments across the country to, to just do a better job. And so that's just part of this. So, and I, I would imagine, you know, the DOJ, I, I don't know about this. I'm not a political guy. I don't really get involved in any of this. Um, but I would say that I, I, I have had that experience with the DOJ. Just so the folks know that are listening, the Department of Justice came in to invest, investigate us for excessive force um, in 2007. Right. right. They are in no way, no way uh, easy on us. Um, they are holding us. And, and I'll tell you, Julie, and I'll say it to Nick, uh, the DOJ coming to Yonkers was probably the best thing that happened to us uh, because, yeah. you know, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the ACLU. I don't care if you're if, if, whatever organization you are, it's very hard to look within oneself and be completely sub objective. Right. So when they came in, we, you know, we, we, you know, we just did a lot of inventory and we're moving forward. I'm seeing success um, and we're going to build on a success. But I, I think in many ways, I don't know if you would agree or disagree or you would with abstain from saying, but I would say we're from, from a community outreach standpoint, the Yonkers Police Department is miles ahead of a lot of other agencies our size yeah. um, and we'll yeah, continue uh, obviously there have been good changes over the years over the last more than yeah, and, and we'll never be yeah. satisfied we'll, we'll never yeah. be satisfied we want to be greedy yeah. about this like we always yeah. want to be better and we want to say like where so if this is if the if the drone is an issue and and this is something that we can take a look at and say well like i said i'm not gonna um I, I'm not going to move off the position that certainly there are absolutely good reasons to use the drone um, and if we can try to like, kind of like marry that up with the things that are less comfortable and policy that out to make sure that you're satisfied, you know, you're comfortable and the public in general is comfortable, we'll worry about that. That's what we do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell I you this. Next. What Julie, Julie's pointing out is that you're under pressure to create a structure, a uh, technological structure for surveillance. And what we're saying is that we want the piece of that structure that has to do with observing protests and political rallies to not be put in place because it is something that once it's in place, you can't get rid of it. And once it's in place, it, is, it creates a record on video that inevitably will be demanded by other law enforcement agencies. So what we're saying is that on the, on the local level, in order to create a positive First Amendment environment, which is so essential to the general public, and particularly for people of color, that do not put in place that part of the surveillance structure so that you can protect the, the individual rights of people who are powerless in the face of the technology that government has available to it. And would you consider the possibility of not using drones at protests? I absolutely will consider it. Okay. I absolutely will. I, I, I mean, from day one, I said that. I absolutely will consider it. I, I won't say absolutely, a thousand percent, I'm sold, but I'll read, I'll listen, I'll research, and I'll get back to you. And, and maybe okay. it'll be bad Great. news and say, yeah. you know, we, we came Thank to this you. conclusion and there'll be other steps, but I certainly will always consider it. Nick, who is your council person in Yonkers? I don't, I don't live I mean, in Yonkers. Yonkers. I live it's in Julie lives in Yonkers. Okay. Shanae is yeah. my council person. I don't think she's aware of this issue. Okay. I, at least as of the demonstration, she hadn't been aware yeah. of it, even as a civil liberties issue. She was. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, I, yeah. you're certainly giving me things. We're going to try and educate about. her. 
you, you're certainly giving me things to think about. I'll just say that, like, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I can't imagine you would disagree, is that this, this was not the intention. This intention was just to have another vantage point to see what was going on to make sure everyone was doing what they're supposed to be doing, just another tool. Um, you know, it was like, uh, I, I give an example. I was going to say earlier, Nick, I was down at the third precinct when um, the protesters came to the third precinct for the big protest. Had to be like 500 people there. Um, we had cops on the roof across the street to watch the crowd right. as it came. Um, of course, that turned into they, they were snipers and they were armed with rifles. Yeah. Which was nothing further from the truth. Now, what I'm going to tell you, and it's going to play into what your position is, is that I said, get them off the roof. I mean, uh, the, all it does is, is create hysteria and panic. And, and, you know, we did not have anyone up there with rifles. That's patently untrue. Right. But there is that component is what you're describing with the drone is to create this kind of panic mm-hmm. that, you know, yes. now, now there's guys up there and it's not, they, they did not have rifles. Um, you have to move delicately with these things. Um, and you have to be mindful of that stuff. So we, so they, we got them off the roof and, and, and maybe the, the, the parallel for what you're talking about is we just don't, we don't surveil and we don't do protests. Now, yeah. It, it, like you, you gotta you gotta work with me here. What if the protests, unfortunately, unlike Yonkers, because we shouldn't be theorists, right? We should be practical people. Yeah. What if the whole thing erupts in physical violence and disorder and uh, people firebombing police precincts, like in Minneapolis? Do you do you st- take the point that we should not be trying to find out who's doing that? Because I that's that, where we really disagree. Well, okay. This is this. Is, I'll say two things about that. First of all. Uh, Protests in this country have been going on since the very beginning of the country. Absolutely. And um, this this kind of technology had not been brought to bear up until very recently. And I think that the general public has not felt that they are constantly watched up until maybe 10, 15 years ago. Fair point. And uh, so this is something that's very different. The other point uh, that I'll make is that uh, all this surveillance that goes on and all this data gathering and, and uh, the coordination and trading of data among agencies has really done nothing to prevent what has been going on in the streets in the sense of the violence. If you look at the, and, and then we, we say, well, this is a military model. If you look at Afghanistan, I'm just reading a book called Unmanned. And it's about the technological, compli- you know, very complex and elaborate and expensive technology that has been brought to bear to try to subdue resistance in Afghanistan and Iraq. And really, it's been a total failure in the sense that it's caused more trouble than it actually has prevented. And so I think that the, the, the danger for a person in your position is that you can be uh, enamored by the the wonders of the technology to make it and and to make people in power feel we can watch, we can do, we can do this and control people, which leads to more suffering and more conflict rather than say, okay, people are gonna express themselves. We'll use normal police work to prevent precincts from, from being burned down. To, to prevent violence rather than feel like the technology will let us somehow prevail in the end when in fact it just leads to a prolongation of the of the of the suffering yeah and, i mean i i look okay so let's start with the first part um i agree that in peaceful protests it's really not needed i disagree with you that if someone's going to conduct physical violence against someone else i do have a responsibility to, um, you know, take what legal steps I can to make sure that that victim uh, has justice, right? I can't just say, well, you know, a person felt angry and so they hit someone else over the head with a chair. So we're just going to let that go. Like, that's not how it works. That's not how real world works. And so, um, you know, I think I I just, if, if we're just talking the theoretical, like I'm grateful that we don't have these problems in Yonkers here. But I can tell you that if if someone wanted to firebomb a police precinct, uh, I certainly would want to get video footage so I could find out as best I could who was doing it 
so we could arrest them and we could put them in jail for doing it. So, you don't have well, surveillance you, cameras at the precincts? Well, if it's on fire, I don't know if the surveillance cameras are going to work. No, but, that, but that's, a, that's a situation where your police officers would already be in the street, be involved. They would have their body cams. They would be doing well, they withdrew in the, If you look at Minneapolis, they withdrew. There was no police officers there. That's why the place burned down. I mean, well, then, you know, then that the, 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 the drone wouldn't have made any difference in the first place because well, if the police weren't prepared to be there. Your point, it wouldn't have prevented, but it would have been able for us to follow up and find out who did it. Because uh, well. the truth is, if you have this many, you know, listen, the overwhelming majority of people that have protested um, as robust as they have with George Floyd, and, and I'll be the first to say, they, the guy was murdered. You know, yeah. I'm ashamed. Um, I'm, I was sickened by seeing it. I, I, I'm not going to change my opinion on that. Uh, disgusted. Um, it's, it's disheartening for good police officers to see that because it's like, you know, we, we, we've been working so hard to make connections with the community. And Julie knows this in Yonkers. Yeah. Again, I'm not talking yeah. about anybody else. I'm talking about yeah. us. Yeah. Um, and then say we're, we're in a different place now. Um, but look, regardless. You know, if massive crimes are taking place, you already have the drones. You don't have to be surveilling peaceful protests to find out I what agree. happened I, I think when I, you've I, got I, criminal activity yeah. going on. And I'm not saying that I know that that's the answer to start flying in drones. I'm really concerned if that's the answer because of watching how military equipment has already been used against American citizens peacefully protesting. So mm -hmm. I'm really concerned about future potential for violence dropping from the skies in New York the way it is in Afghanistan. And that may be alarmist, but, but the police are being militarized across the country and drone technology is military technology. We already know that there was coordinated national police, or we are. It is, it is a good assumption that even under the Obama administration, there was national coordination of police actions against the Occupy protests, which I know you could argue they were illegally occupying public land, but. Well, I mean, it's not even occupying public land. You just, was, you just here's was, the thing. You could also look at it as peaceful, people you peacefully gathering. You can't hurt other people and you can't damage property. You can't. I, I'm just never going to agree with that. Right, we and we all of those considerations that. have to get weighed against the First Amendment considerations. Correct. The Supreme Court over and over is weighing the right of the right of citizens against the right of citizens to protest, the right of citizens to write what they want to say and to criticize and to gather against and and the concept of preventive policing is always controversial. You're gonna you, when you in, when you start surveilling people to prevent future crimes, you're making assumptions the way the New York City Police Department did about, for example, Muslim propensity to commit acts of terror. That the Supreme Court ruled ju it's just illegal to make that assumption. So well, the geez. same is true of peaceful protests. It's not legal to assume that it's even though it might have happened someplace. It's not. I don't think it's legal to assume that there's going to be violence resulting from it, and thereby to police it. To We're in agreement. So. We're in agreement. Anyway, so I'm I glad with, we are. I you, Julie, I agree with you on that. Yeah. I will say this: yeah. um, Harka and my communities of color want us to go out there and make sure that they're safe. They have a right, and it is my responsibility to make them as safe and secure as they can. And you know what yeah. the complaints are, and I'm not going to have. Um, you know, people being robbed or, or, you know, things like that happening to my people in my precincts. I'm just not going to have it, you know. Right. Um, and I don't think anybody should think that, that there should be, we should allow that, you know. And, and particularly, Let me, I have, I really only have one more question and I have a client who I've got to call pretty soon. Um, okay. Is the Yonkers Police Department in the interest of protecting property or in any other interest monitoring cell phone or internet traffic? No. Okay. No, I'm glad to hear. Good. No, we're not <laughs> okay. far. Julia, I, I, I mean, I'm you. sure you occasionally get a get a get a warrant to listen to somebody's phone conversation. But no, yeah, I mean, listen, there's not. different yeah. levels. So you, yeah. you know, if we go, but we're going before a judge, we're making right. a case, and right. the judge, you know, a lot of times will say no, and sometimes right. the judge will say yes. I'm assuming I'm not a constitutional scholar, but I will say that those are very, very carefully vetted requests and they have to rise to the absolute necessity of the case yeah so 
you know, just well, remember something. And this I'm not a lawyer either. I'm a mental health counselor, and I've got to get going and meet with the client. Okay, Nick, we are not. We are the executive branch. So one of the things yeah. Julie will tell you about the way we police in Yonkers is we don't decide, we don't make the law, and we we enforce the law. We don't interpret it. And a lot of the enforcement has to do with what the public and what our communities want. Right. That's really what matters, it, and that's why policing should always be very localized. Because when you're localized, you're, you're able to, you know, you're able to kind of like go back to meetings like we do. And Julie sits there every single month and say, okay, so we had this frustration about this particular pattern of behavior and we tried to solve the problem. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but we're always in the game. And I think that's one of the reasons why we were, were pretty successful in Yonkers too, is because I want to be very dialed into what my constituency wants. Right. You know, you know yeah. what kind of policing part of, one thing I'll just say before we go, part of the Yale partnership is we're going to be doing a community vitality survey and we'll need everybody to help us get that information out because like any other company, you know, I, I run a very client based company, right? It's all about my residents. They are my clients. If my clients are happy, then I'm doing well. If my clients are unhappy, I'm not doing well. And that, that happiness or unhappiness kind of goes to me on two pillars. One pillar is, how is the community being treated by the police? How do they perceive how we're policing? So that's one part of the, it's a huge part of the happiness quotient. The other part is how safe are we? Is crime down so they feel like they live in a safe environment, um, both from the police and because of the police. So it's like trying to find that real correct balance of, we come back every month and they say, guys, you're really messing up here. We need you to straighten out or great job guys. So. John, I'm sure yes. you're police commissioner, at least in substantial part, because of your constant be constantly being in touch with the community. And community. Well, you got to love the community. So that's that's the thing. I love my community. Yeah. I love every yeah. one of them, you know, and, yeah. and they're wonderful yeah. and they're very supportive. And yeah. so it's like you almost feel like I don't want to let them down yeah. ever. And it's not easy in an environment of pretty severe economic deprivation. So... Hats off. I appreciate your efforts to stay in touch with people and support, Always. support us. And I, I uh, look forward to hearing more about how you're going to be developing policy that will respect our First Amendment rights. For the uh, you got it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I'll definitely, um, like I said, I think most times life is uh, a conversation and life is, you know, going back and forth and right. I could definitely see why you feel uncomfortable, you know, to wrap this up about why drones and a peaceful protest are not um, probably the best idea. I am relieved to hear that you think that, you know, it's okay to use them for finding lost people. If someone has Alzheimer's and they've wandered off into the woods. I mean, I just, I think it's illogical to think that, you know, if, if we could, we could save someone's life by having that available and covering more ground. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I think that that's a good thing too. So let's, let's try to figure all this out. It's a tricky okay, balance. Well, I, Thank I you for your concerns. Wanna, yeah. Yeah. Close by thanking you, but also um, just saying again that um, uh, please um, consider not putting that piece in place that intimidates people. For peaceful which, protests. For peaceful protests. And not be swept up in what is now an epidemic of opinion that technological responses in data gathering and surveillance are going to be what brings us to a better place in society. Because there is a huge pressure, and I understand on you to do that with the argument this keeps people safe when in fact they may be physically safe but emotionally, mentally, politically demobilized by the, the, the fear of government. Well, I think like Julie said, it's a difficult balance. I mean, you know, like you said, on the one hand, and that's the whole idea about the way we police. We have to police in a way and, you know, where we crime may or quality of life may not be exactly ideal because the public wants us to handle this in a different way. And that's okay. That's okay. It's like I said, we have to be very, very attentive and very responsive to what our communities need. That's the number one thing for me uh, above yeah. all else. Like is the community happy 
with the way we're doing policing. Now, keep in mind, Nick, we're not perfect. We are not perfect yeah. people, nor are you, nor is Julie. I am certainly a very flawed man, but I will say this. We get up every morning and we try our best. Yeah. We make mistakes, we certainly do, but the intentions are right. They really are. And, and that's the whole thing about what we're trying to do here with a lot of the reforms we're doing. Like there's such, a, like I said earlier, such a clamor to say it's got to get done. It's got to get done. No, it's got to get done right. Yeah. And so well, I guess yeah, I want to, I just want to say your point about taking the, the men off the roof who were watching, the police who were watching. Uh, what you perceived at that moment was that the, their presence watching and the suspicion about them could erode your confidence, the confidence that the people, that the public had in you. And you took that, you, you removed that. And what I'm saying is that, that the presence of surveillance drones, any kind of surveillance, a, a political protest could seriously damage your uh, ability to uh, ha have the loyalty of the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why it's always about listening to everybody. Yeah. Very important. Okay. Thank you well, very much for your you're, time. You're very gracious to see you. Your time with us. Yes, Take sir. care. I, I appreciate Thank you. your concerns and we'll be in touch for sure. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.